Okay, so now we've had that introduction from David. Thanks, David. Really helpful to understand where slow free trade is at in their in their timeline and in their process. So now here we are. We've come to the computer, and we're going to start working on the pitch deck. So let's let's recap again, and we've got to keep this firmly in our mind as we go through and prepare the pitch deck. Who is our audience? Who are we working with here? Who are we looking to pre present this to? There's another sub question of that. The other sub question is. We anticipate, David, we're sitting a bit strangely at the moment because we've got the computer there, but we anticipate that this is something you'll send to people. You won't necessarily, initially, in the first instance, be standing in front of them as you present, right? Exactly. You're completely right that we won't be presenting that. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're not working on something like, uh, I don't know, uh, a pitch that you would do on a scene. Face-to-face. Uh, face or, face to, like. or face to face It's something that we want... Uh, some of our uh, advisory members to, to send to diff different audiences right. so they can get acquainted to, to the project and get excited about it and wanting it to, to support us. Okay, so that's, that's really important. Okay, when you're preparing the pitch deck, you've got to really understand not just who your audience is, but how they're going to receive this. So let's imagine that you know, there's these corporates, as, 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 as David said, there could be corporates, there could be philanthropists, there could be donor organizations. And they're sitting somewhere at their desk, could be at home, working from home at these times, they could be in their office, and maybe they're receiving 100 emails a day. Maybe they're only receiving 10, but maybe they're 10 pitch decks that they're receiving every day from people who are trying to encourage them and inspire them to part with some money to help their organ that organization go forward. So we've got a lot of competition, okay? So as we send this pitch deck, we've got to think to ourselves, how do we get ourselves to the top of their attention span? How do we get ourselves where they're thinking, golly, this organization is different. This organization is doing something really good. I'd like to be involved in this. I need to know more. Okay, so as we said yesterday, imagine that these organizations, these people who have money, who have expressed an interest in parting with some of it to help projects like this, I, I would guess that they maybe get 10,000 pitches a year. Honestly, you know, it sounds like a lot, but you know, there's so many organizations out there with great ideas pitching for funding support that when someone says, well, I'm interested in this, boom, they get targeted, right? So we've got to get ourselves top of the list out of those 10,000 organizations. They may choose 10 over the period of a 12 month period to fund, okay? Some organizations will choose more, but the grants will be smaller. So how much, that's one of the questions, David, how much money are we looking for here? So, so we have different scenarios, but the, 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 the lowest one is 500,000 uh, Swiss francs or it's close to US dollars, uh, if it can help. Over, and over what period of time? So uh, uh, over uh, uh, six months. Okay, so that's quite a chunk of money. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so that's a big ask. And, and what's the second scenario, right? No, and, and, and our... our final target would go up to 2 million because this would help to to really build a sustainable organization uh, full paid until we reach uh, a break even okay. so that's that's our scenario and the, the 500,000 that we're talking about is to build the tech team that could bring um, our technology to uh, what we call the MVP which so stands for? It's a minimal viable product. Yeah. So something that we could really take to mark to market, if I might say. Yeah, that's fine. And and uh, and that that would work. That would be robust. Uh, so I think it would be really two phases. One where we build the first version, then we test it, we look into it, and uh, we try to make it more scalable. And then uh, at the end of the six months, so we we would have this product that we could really rely on, and that would be proud of uh, taking to the market. Taking to the market. Okay, so that's a really interesting thing to know. We've obviously got to know that as we put our pitch deck together. What's our target? So now what's fascinating about that is that so many of these smaller non-profits go to philanthropists or donors asking for $10,000. Okay, and, and there's hundreds of them, thousands of them asking for small amounts of money, or maybe up to $50,000, some up to $100,000. Not many of them go looking for $500,000. Now, it could be that we get that $500,000 from a number of organizations. We don't have to get it from one, okay, that's fine. But there's, there's positives, neg positives and negatives to this. The negative, of course, is that's a lot of money, right? But the positive is it shows vision. 
that shows ambition. So slavery trade is not just looking to get something going and you know, do a little thing on the corner and maybe affect three people. The slavery trade's vision is such that they do need that large amount of money because they want to take their important work to scale as urgently as possible. So I think this is a great positive. Okay. Now, the other thing that we're going to put in the back, not well, in the front of our mind, as we work through this slide deck, I've already said we've got to, two things. We've got to inspire the person who's maybe sitting in a dark room somewhere. Maybe they're tired. They've been inundated by pitch decks for the last ten years. Maybe they're very experienced people. Maybe they're just young people. They don't know. Right? They're the first pass before it gets to the 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 board of the foundation or the the rich philanthropist who will make the final decision. They've got to decide whether you go to that next step or not. So we've got to inspire them. Okay, that's the first thing. But the second key thing that's going to differentiate slave free trade or you who's putting your pitch deck together is to make it clear to the person who's receiving it that this is a great and an incredible opportunity. You're not coming with a begging bowl asking for their goodwill. You're giving them an opportunity. You're doing them a favour. Okay, that's what we've got to, we've got to think of as we're going through this pitch deck. Okay, so the first thing, and I think your first pitch deck, David, that we went through um, started with this, is talk about the problem. What is the problem that your yes. organisation is trying to solve? And, and the, the slave free trade pitch deck started off with this, and, and the, for me, the best thing about slave free trade is your fantastic um, tagline, made in freedom. It's just inspiring, right? I think it's beautiful, yes. and, uh, and the picture that you had was, was inspiring and beautiful. Like, who doesn't want to be involved in, in that, made in freedom? So I think you've got a great, great starting there. So made in freedom, what does that mean? So what we've got to do, we've got to make it clear, and we don't have to rush into this. We don't have to do this in one slide. How do you describe the problem of modern slavery in one slide? Not easy. So I think what we can do is take a few slides with some inspiring images to try and convey to the receiver of this pitch deck that this is a huge global problem with terrible consequences for so many people, and we're all complicit. We're all complicit in it. Exactly. Right? So here we lay out the problem. Having laid out the problem, and you've captured them, oh my God, this is a problem, right? This isn't about, you know, this isn't a small thing. This is a really big thing. This is a really global, important crisis that slavery trade are looking at grappling with. I thought, okay, that's pretty good. That's impressive. I've got that. Um, then we need to introduce slavery trade. And, and we didn't do that in the first exactly. um, deck. We had mismatches of patchwork slides and things like that. So who is slavery trade? And why would I, as the person who's reading that pitch deck, pass it upstairs to the people who would make decisions? What's going to get you through me as the first filter? So I need to be inspired by who you are as an organisation. And, and I don't think we did that well enough. So that's what we've got to work on today. Tell us about Slave Free Trade. Where did it come from? What's the vision? Um, what's your plan? How are you going to grapple with this problem? And grappling is a key word here. Okay, yesterday we went through the slide deck and there's this idea that slavery trade's got the solution. Um, and we've talked about that, David. Um, these are wicked, complex problems. In many ways, there is no solution. You can only make things better. Um, like racism, like deforestation, like inequality, like climate change. We can do things that make it better. And hopefully when enough of those things flow together, we actually get to a point that's pretty good. But I think humility is also important in this because it shows that you understand the breadth and scale of the problem and then you're not coming well I've got the solution to that here why didn't you talk to me before well, hold on a minute sounds like you don't really know what you're talking about if you think you can do it so easily so I think we, we, we paint out the problem we paint out who's who slave free trade is what's your vision what's your structure who you are where you're set up what's your identity and what are you doing to grapple with this problem what does it look like What's your plan? What's your vision? Where are you today? And where do you want to be in a year, two years, five years, ten years' time? Okay. So we start getting people saying, this makes sense to me. I can see this organisation has thought this stuff through. And then only at the end can we come with them with the opportunity. Notice I didn't say the ask. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about you don't come to them with an ask. You come to them with an opportunity. 
Okay, so we've got this situation. Here's the grand problem. God, it's a really big problem, and I'm, I'm really, our organisation wants to be involved in doing something with that problem. Slave free trade. Wow, they seem like a really interesting organisation. They've got a vision, they've got a plan. The plan makes sense to me. I can see what they're trying to do. They've got this need, they've got this gap that's holding them back. Hmm, okay. What's the opportunity to close that gap? What's the opportunity for, for my organisation? What's the opportunity for the world? These people seem to have it. Let's get going. So we come to them with an opportunity. So problem at the start, identify the problem in all its magnitude, identify, talk about yourself, talk about what you're doing, how you're grappling with the problem, and then what's the opportunity at the end? So that's the flow that we're going to progress through today as we as we work on these slides. How does that sound, mate? Does, I mean, have you got it? I mean, that's just my theory. And interested in any thoughts that you might have on that? No, I, 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 I'm fully aligned on, on on your vision and and this presentation. So it's been the addition of different comments, different presentation. We never had the time really to sit and go mm. through it. And 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 right now, what you you propose is really, I think. Where we should where, where we should go. So I'm um, very happy to to work on that. Too. Let's give that a go. So just to just to recap, okay. So you're making your own pitch deck. So you've got a person reading it who might be tired, who might be overwhelmed, who might be used to receiving ten thousand pitch decks a year for the last five years. How do we get their attention? Not easy, right? So imagine putting the hat of that person on, so that when your email comes through. And it might come through, as, as we're finding in this case, one of the advisory board members from Slave Free Trade is going to send this pitch deck to contacts that he has. So they're not going to be cold contacts. They're going to be contacts who are warm. This is great. Let's, let's, you know, we, should, we should reiterate that. Think about who that person is. If it's a warm contact, they're going to be ready to receive it. Or is it a cold contact who knows nothing more about you? There'll be a bit of a slight change. Not much. I don't think you need to change your deck very much in those situations. But... You know, it just means that you're going in a little bit warmer, a little bit hotter, which is which is helpful. But nonetheless, you're still going to be in competition with 10,000 others. That's the first. Keep that in mind. We know who our audience is. In this case, it's people who might be willing to give a grant. They might be looking for some return on investment in terms of their own brand recognition. We don't know that yet. We'll work through that. Um, but then we start with a problem in all its magnitude and all its intensity we try and inspire them to understand this is something that needs grappling with urgently. Slave, modern slavery is one of those, so we don't have a major problem there. We talk about who the organisation is, how we grapple with these things, what our, what our idea is, and then we come with the gap where we're missing, what we need help with, and then we come to them with the opportunity. This is the opportunity that we're presenting with you today. And hopefully at the end of that, they'll be passing our slide deck upstairs and we'll get some progress. Let's see how we go.